Hey, what's up, y'all? It's Josh Way back with another episode of Take One with your boy Josh Way. We're here in Ontario at CreepyCon 2022. Don't make the sound. Hey, it's Josh Way here with the legendary Keith David, the man, myth, and legend himself. Grew up watching him. My father used to watch amazing movies of this man, and I had the honor to sit here. You know, I, I would honestly say I am not the biggest horror fan. I'm creeped out this entire time. But <laughs> so when I walk through the doors and you be the first person I see, it kind of hit me like, wow. This is amazing. So I'm used to seeing you on the big screen. You doing your thing, killing it as a young man raised in Harlem. Like, it's an inspiration, honestly, because that's why I'm here in California myself to pursue television as well. So to see you here is like, all right, this might actually be a good day. <laughs> so I just want to say thank you for everything that you've done. And I know my buddy Gio also has a question for you as well. Um, so in your point of view, how was it like being able to portray one character to another from Spawn to the Shadow Man to the Thing, in your opinion? How was it like being able to become those characters? I'm an actor, that's what we do. <laughs> so, and it was great fun. I had, you know, each character is a different, uh, different brand of fun. So, you know, when I go to work, that's what I do. I have a good time. Hey, that's the best way to live. Y'all hear that? When you go to work, have a good time. If you don't like where you work, find a place you love to work, all right? And if there's any piece of inspiration, motivation that you can give to anyone that will watch this interview right here, what could you give to someone that could be pursuing something that you have done already? Follow your bliss. Do what makes you happy. Go after it. And don't let anyone tell you no. Just keep doing it. And there you have it. From Keith Dave himself, thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you, man. Hey, what's up, guys? I'm here with one of the legendary actors who played Michael Myers, Brad Lurie. How are you enjoying your time at CreepCon so far? Uh, you know what? I'm really having a good time. I was so excited that Mr. Remar and Mr. Howard were going to be here. I haven't seen Andrew and uh, Andrew Bernarski, and I haven't seen Christina Cleave in probably a decade. CJ Graham is always a great guy to talk to. And, and, you know, for a first-time show, I think they really hit it out of the park. They did a great job. David on a, a show called uh, uh, Chronicles of Riddick, and um, yeah, 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 and he's a super guy. I gotta get a picture with him later. But no, I'm having a great time. How are you guys enjoying the show? We're doing all right. Um, enjoying our time, meeting famous people as much as we can. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know if he's. I'm not a horror guy either. I just happen to work in one of the films, right? People are asking these questions. I'm, I'm not alone. What they're talking about. <laughs> I'm not alone. I'm, I'm, I'm the only alone one. Here. Love horror fans. Not a big fan of the movies. I'm the only alone one here now. <laughs> but um, we got some questions we want to ask. And well, to question you, right? for me. Sorry. You was on set with Sir Buster Rhymes. Sir Buster Rhymes. Tyra Banks. Yes, I was. And the Scream Queen, Jamie Lee, Lee, Lee Curtis. Yeah, yes, I was. How was that? Well, uh, I, it was a great time. I didn't have a lot of interaction with Tyra, unfortunately. And her, her, we did a scene where I came up behind her and strangled her, strangled her with the cables. And then they decided to... Uh, uh, um, to wait, 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 wait. I, I tried to let that go. You, 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 yeah. you, you did what now? It was in the script. I had no oh, choice. Yeah. Same as same as getting my ass kicked by Busta. Oh, <laughs> I had so many people yeah. complain about that, but Busta and I got along great. Busta made me laugh. He was a lot of fun. He was. Uh, I, I guess he was a little late to set sometimes. I never saw that myself. And every morning in the makeup trailer, he gave me the most genuine giant bear hug. Awesome. And um, and uh, Tyra was a sweetheart. And Jamie Lee. 
You know, this is Jamie Lee Curtis. She only had 30 mm -hmm. seconds of non-dialogue screen time left in her contract. She said, whatever you can shoot in a long weekend, she was there for four days, and she donated all her money to the, um, the Children's Hospital with the terminally ill kill kids. That's her charity. She looks after these terminally ill kids. That's, that's, you know, that's why I love her even more than ever. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. Jamie Lee Curtis, a woman of the people. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and one more question before we get out your way. You know, busy day ahead of you. Oh, I'm very busy. Oh, absolutely. I have lots of beer to drink. <laughs> <laughs> yes, like 25 under the I'm yeah. kidding. <laughs> um, I'm so, to get a Budweiser sponsor. <laughs> hey, I, I got you, okay? I'll, I'll, I'll drop some names for you, all right? Matt, but again, <laughs> um, So does anyone out there that's been looking up to you, that's been following your story, following your path, following your journey, does any motivation, inspiration you can give to someone that's trying to get into this industry? Well, uh, all I can say is you have to have a genuine love of the art, the craft, and the performing. If you're getting into it for the limos, the red carpet, and the big paychecks, that's a huge meaning. You got to love uh, the community. You got to love. You got to love uh, the, the literature of, of plays, films. You know, film scripts, and you got to. It's got to be something that you're doing for yourself, not because you want to have your face on a stamp. Wow. You know, that's what I would say. Well, there you have it. Hey, do it for the right reasons. There check you your go. heart, check that's your mind. Right. Be <laughs> real. To thine own self, be true. There you go. To your own self, be true. From the man himself, thank you so much. Thanks, guys. What's up, guys? I'm back here at CreepCon with the legendary Miko Hughes. He was in Pet Cemetery, as you know, but he also was in Nightmare. The new, what was the movie called again? I'm sorry, I can't remember. New Nightmare. There you go. I'm sorry, I'm drawing a blank. But yeah, um, in your experience, how was it like acting from a young kid to now being able to experience Pet Cemetery to Friday the 13th franchise? It was good. It was fun. I was very thankful. It was a lucky uh, experience to, to have, for sure. How about being able to play the iconic character of Gage? You know, how did that feel? It was like a big role to be able to play or anything like that? Sure, yeah. Yeah, I know it's a, an, an honor to be part of uh, what seems to be like a franchise now. I hear they're making a, a series, potentially. So, um, yeah. I'd, I had no concept of what it would be this many years later. I, I don't think I had any concept of what it even was at that time, but yeah, it's pretty wild. Sorry about that. Um, are you going to be part of the new franchise as well? Or do you have like any part of it or any like input on it or anything like that? I, I just heard a few little things. I have, nobody's talked to me about anything like that yet, but uh, that'd be cool. You still enjoying yourself at CreepCon though? Everything going good so far though? Yeah. Yeah, this is cool. For a first year show, CreepyCon's like killing it. It's, it's really fun and great turnout. And uh, I think, I'd assume they're going to do it again. It's only going to grow from here. So. Will you be a part of the other ones as soon as I have other ones? Will you be like attending it as well or anything? Well, it's kind of local, so it's definitely easy for me to come. If they want to have me back, I'm more than happy to. Sure. Yeah. Well, that was pretty much it, guys. Thank you, Miko, again. It was a great honor. So... Do you have any advice or any words of inspiration, any motivation for anyone that wants to pursue television or acting or even just life in general? Uh, you know, you came a long way. You had a lot of open doors, a lot of opportunities and a lot of yeses. And I'm sure it came with a lot of no's <laughs> as well. I can imagine that. Yeah. Um, but do you have that motivation or inspiration for someone that's trying to go in those same path, that same, you know, outlook on life and that same passion? Oh man, this this is heavy stuff for like a washed up kid actor, man. <laughs> um, I get everyone's journey's different. You just gotta stick with it and and be you know tough to, especially in the film industry. Like you said, there's a lot of rejection. You got to be able to have thick skin for that. And you also have to know when it's a sign or a lesson, and and to be able to adapt and uh, you know just keep at it and. Uh, Everyone, everyone's journey is different. I can't give specific advice, but just do your best and keep at it. That's all I try to do. So that's, that's usually the routine that a lot of people don't, you know, fully pursue because they see that wall, they hit that wall, they see that mountain, they get that no, and they fall. But hey, this is a guy that got a lot of no's, but also got a lot of yeses because he kept on pushing. Appreciate you, man. Thanks. Hey, what's up, guys? We're here with the legendary Tom Morga. He has been in Ghostbusters. He played Michael and Jason in part four and five. So this is a great opportunity. How are you enjoying your time? Really great. A lot of good people. Uh, fans are the best. We're having a good time. Awesome. That's awesome, man. How about you? This is awesome. I'm not a, I tell everybody that we've interviewed so far, I am not a horror fan. I'm super scared, uncomfortable, <laughs> but I appreciate 
the technical aspect, especially of the stunt world. A lot of people in the stunt world, I feel like, don't get the full recognition that they really deserve, honestly. And I didn't necessarily understand that until I got into the film industry myself. And you guys are the real superheroes to these people that look like superheroes. Well, let me, let me say that uh, uh, actually, originally, stuntmen did not want to be known. And when you do a uh, job as a stuntman, you have an actor that says, well, you're a stunt. Well, yeah, yeah. I show him what to do, he does it. That's the way it usually was, but now things getting more complicated, and of course it, it takes more, uh, something are known now. And uh, I did, uh, like the pirate movies, uh, I got to do a lot of sword fights, a lot of fun things there. I did a lot of Star Trek. I started out in 79 doubling Spock in the original Star Trek, the motion picture. I did one. Every episode of that. Yeah, Every well, episode. I did Next Generation Deep Space Nine Borger and Enterprise, and I worked, uh, I mean, 15 to 20 years just being a stuntman on Star Trek, so I got a bunch of aliens behind me. So it's been a lot of fun, but like, like you say, uh, we, we get more recognition now than we used to, but not all stuntmen are, are, are interested in a lot of recognition. It's sometimes it causes a little competition and a guy tries to do something a little bigger and better and he doesn't have to do it and he might get hurt. So, you know, well, that's the main thing. Our job is to make an actor look good and to do it safely. And so if you can accomplish that and make it look good on film, we've done what we're supposed to. Wow, that's amazing. Oh, oh. I got one more question actually before we head out, before you stop this one. How did it feel like to fill in the shoes of Michael Myers and Jason Voorhees? Like, did you have to become those characters or did you play the same character in your opinion? Well, when I did uh, Michael Myers and when I did Jason, I, I really didn't know uh, too much about them. I mean, and as a stuntman, your job is to double the actor and do stuff, and usually it's action. So for a guy like me and most stunt guys to be a character that's a murderer and a killer, I mean, it ain't hard. <laughs> so I didn't have to prep too much. That's awesome. Uh, well, thank you for your time. And uh, can you try to do like a backflip real quick? Uh, no, I can't. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> All right. Well, no backflips today, guys. I'll, punch. I'll take a punch. I'll take a, I'll take a punch. Yeah. Like, All right, now, let me show you. You've got to take your glasses off yeah. first. All right, cool. now, I'm going to show you how to do a punch. All right. Now, here's camera. We always, we always address the camera. Now, when I punch, you got to be able to snap your head. That means like this. Like that, okay? Oh, right. none? A couple of snaps. Oh, my God. Come on, there you go. Now, as my fist approaches right here, that's when you do it, okay? So we're going to do a practice. Here's slow right. motion and snap. Okay, right. now we're going to do the real thing. Right. You ready? Yeah, how'd you like it? Did it look good? I got punched okay. by Mike. Gee, are you okay? Oh. <laughs> I got punched by Mike. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> cut, cut, uh, cut. Hey, what's up guys? I'm here at CreepCon with the legendary um, actresses from the Rob Zombie franchise. I was gonna ask them some questions and I was gonna ask, how was it like to be able to be part of the Halloween franchise from knowing you guys were remaking it from that time? How did it feel to portray these characters? Nice. Oh, um, well, I was 17, so I didn't really know um, how massive the Halloween franchise was. I kind of discovered that very fast when my name was announced and people were comparing me to Jamie Lee Curtis and then I was freaking the fuck out. <laughs> um, but honestly, it was an amazing experience. I, I now am very familiar with the movies and, and Jamie Lee, you know, her performance. And I mean, it's two completely different versions oh, yeah. and it's two completely, it's done two completely different ways. But I mean, I'm just blessed to be a part of the family. Yeah, no, I feel the same. I feel so honored to be a part of the family. Like, that's, uh, I had no idea what I was getting into. I didn't grow up watching horror movies, really, so I didn't know. I knew of the movie, but I had never watched it, and I did not know about the horror conventions and the world and the fans, and that was like a, a whole new world a whole new world <laughs> that's very interesting um did you guys did you guys did you guys feel like you guys had big shoes to fill during this remake like did you guys feel like you had a lot weighing on you compared to the original to be able to like satisfy the fans oh i mean like i said yeah people were comparing me to her i mean jamie's just like 
massive in her own right. You know, she's an amazing actress, and and this, I feel like this was like her breakout role. So you know, this is what like made her. And yeah, it was big, big fucking shoes to fill for sure. What about you? I didn't know again what I was filling and what shoes I was filling until after we shot the film. So um, I feel like. In a way, I'm, I'm grateful that I didn't know so that there was not that kind of a pressure or that I was comparing myself to somebody. And then I, I'm happy that the fans liked my interpretation of Linda, you know, how they had seen it with PJ Souls. And um, obviously, and PJ and I love each other. So, and the funny thing is that when sometimes when I see an autograph on, um, I think it's my autograph. And I'm like, wait, I already signed this. And they're like, no, that's PJ's autograph. So actually we have similar handwriting, which is so weird. I feel like PJ and, and you are very similar with your characters. I, I feel like it was like it's identical. Weird. Yeah, it was, yeah. And I didn't know her and I didn't know. So it was just probably like a Rob casting thing where he like yeah. felt yeah, something. Yeah. <laughs> and then, last question: How was it like working with Rob? You know, like how do you guys see him as a director? Oh no, he's awesome, man. He's so cool. I, 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 I will never forget the first time I've ever, I ever saw Rob, and like you know how his presence is is kind of intimidating, and then he opens his mouth and he's like the sweetest man you'd ever meet in your life and and you know he's an activist and you know all this stuff and he's so smart and he's such a hands-on director he's awesome person to work with yes i mean same i was really nervous to meet him at first um i remember like expecting this like really like gruff kind of angry guy <laughs> but he was so nice and then he was like much obviously more calm and mellow in real life than he is on stage and um and yeah he's such a good director i think he's so good at casting and casting is the number one most important job of a director which is why it's so ironic that many directors don't get to cast their own projects because <laughs> it's like it casting is the n first step in creating your movie right because you have to be so specific and he's so good at it um, and, uh, and yeah, and he just, and he lets the actors do what they, what he knows they can do, what their, their strengths are. And, um, he lets you improvise and yeah. So yeah, it was great. Well, it was great listening from you ladies on your experience on the Halloween franchise. It was an honor. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the con as well. All right. Hey, we are here with the legendary Leatherman himself at CreepyCon 2022. How are you doing? I'm doing really good, guys. Really good. So my question, you know, <laughs> I'm not a big, you know, horror guy, slasher guy, blood guy. All this convention is, um, I'm, it's these guys route. <laughs> but my main question for you is, were you into lumber before you got into this? <laughs> <laughs> You know, I got this because uh, I'm a professional stuntman. I was over 30 years. Oh, wow. Okay, now as a stuntman, I went to double the actor in the movie, and then the, act, the actor couldn't lift the chainsaw, so I, had, I did everything else in the movie. So that's how it came about for me, you know, and they were real chainsaws. Uh, nothing was fake on it. They dulled, they dulled uh, the blade a little bit, and uh, we beat the crap out of each other with them. And, uh, <laughs> It was miserably hot. It was in Texas, and it was probably one of the hardest jobs I ever did. And uh, so it was quite an experience. But now, look, you know, 35, 40 years later, here we are. Yep. It's more popular now than it ever was. Uh, yeah, you I've know, kind of heard about that. absolutely. Yeah. So. Uh, my question is, um, how did it feel like stepping into the shoes of Leatherface? Like, how, was it like a big uh, step for you? Did you feel like pressured or anything like no, that? You know what? Not at all, because it was a, again, like I said, it's a job. But now. It, it's kind of cool to be a uh, Leatherface is an iconic horror figure, period. Yeah. And to be known as Leatherface, it's it's really humbling for me. I think it's great. There's so many people that recognize it, and I really I really like that. And I just want to leave with a piece of motivation, inspiration, and advice that you have for anyone out there in the stunt world, like you said, that you were in, and in the acting world that might be pursuing this genre, this niche of work. Uh, you know what? They're both the hardest ones to get into. They're so hard. But here's the thing. It's, it's persistence pays off. 
no matter what you're doing. I don't care what it is. You know, if you're an actor, then go act. You know, if you're a stuntman, then you got to learn your trade, and you got to yeah, you can't be jumping off a of roof. There's a technique to everything. Yeah. All right. So, but persistence will get you on. You know, but when you get that shot, you better have the experience behind you. You better know what you're doing, because you're going to get a shot. Yeah. But if you don't do it right, you will never get another one. So that's it. Thank you. Wow. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. And I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your creepy con. Same thing. Yeah. You know what you're doing. You can eventually it's it'll pay off for you. You Keep doing it. Keep doing. You're not going to make any money. You're not going to do anything. You'll cry and you know and you stomp your foot and do all this stuff. Boom. You know. But one day you know and then you have all this behind you to work from. And they're going. I mean, I got into the guild. And I didn't work for two and a half years, nothing. But in two and a half years, almost three years, I practiced my skills. I went and helped everybody I could help, you know, and did everything I could. So when I got my shot, which I got, uh, I did real well at it. And then that from there, 20, over 25 years worth of work. I made a good living at it. Wow. And I have a great retirement now. So. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I can't walk, but I, I did real well. <laughs> well, I'm in that that weird um, phase right now, actually, of going to the like join the guild or not, because I'm eligible right now, and I've been eligible for a while. But I'm just trying to figure out when to make that leap. Is yeah. it worth making that leap right now? If the timing's right, exactly. If, it, so it, it's, it's all. Is it going to help you? Are you going to uh, Are you going to be able to? Uh, to benefit from that right now. Yes. If you're not exactly. going to, you kind of make you know, hedge it a little bit, you know, until. And, and, uh, but I joined flipping after when after we cost 300 bucks to get in. I, now it's like. No, it was thousands of dollars. 3,000. I think it's 3,000 you know, so right it's, now. It's insane. Yeah. So I went and joined them right away, you know. And I never worked an after show, show in 25 years except Married with Children. Wow. Wow. I did 18 episodes of Married with Children over the years. And that was the only after show I, I worked. Only one. Wow. But it was a great, it was a good, good gig. Absolutely yeah. good gig. Yeah. 18 episodes. That's so a it's, a, it's a hard one to really talk about because it, it, it's a personal thing. You know? Yeah. You know, it, it, it's you hustling. If you're hustling, and you've got an opportunity coming up, you can jump into it, you know, and see what happens. here with the amazing Danielle Harris. How are you enjoying CreepyCon 2022? I am enjoying it very much. It's the first one in this area for me, so it's uh, it's got a very good turnout. Yes, I'm excited, also scared. Every time I turn my head, I'm like, huh. Yeah. <laughs> but, I, but I know this is your world and Gio's world, and I know he has a question for you. Yeah. So my question is, how was it like being able to portray Jamie from part four and five as a little girl? Because I know you were doing your own stunts as well, but how did it feel like to become uh, Michael's like embodiment towards the end of part four as well? Well, I had hoped that I would have gone on to be the killer. That would have been super fun in five, but um, I had a great time. Looking back on it as an adult, it's it's pretty gnarly, the stuff that they had me do for sure as a kid. So, uh, but I had a great time. Yeah. And I heard that you also did your own stunts. Is this true? Some of my own stunts, yes. In, fi in both of them, actually. I was on the roof in four and ran in front of the car in five. And mo I did everything that the stunt double did as well. Wow. So, okay. So what made you do that switch? Like, I'm going to do this also. Was it written for you to actually do them? Or did you say, I want to do this myself? I think they talked me into it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> they talked you into danger. You said, yeah, they did. okay. Wow. <laughs> Absolutely. <that's, laughs> I was like, sure. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, last piece. Um, if you have any advice for anyone that's walking this world, coming into this industry, mm -hmm. there's someone watching you, what would you have to say to them to give them inspiration? Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it. <laughs> Don't, Don't do, do it. it. Make your own horror movies. Yeah. If you want to do horror, cool. Make your own it's movies. Yeah. Wow. Well, Gotta just, do it. You just spoke right here to the producer, so there you go. Hey, thank you for that. Thank you for this amazing interview, Danielle, and we hope that you enjoy the rest of your day. Wow. You, you like yeah. <laughs> so we're here no, with the legend himself, the original, the OG boogeyman from my childhood, at least. My childhood, bro. Hey, your childhood. Hey, my childhood. Hey, all of our childhoods. 
the one and only. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. A little tired. It's the end of the second day here at this convention here. And uh, having fun though, meeting a lot of nice people, great bands. That's always awesome. Yeah, and uh, people like you guys. That's yeah. fun. <laughs> no, I appreciate that. Like, so my first question for you, sure, is how is it knowing that you're representing this cultural icon that just somehow just develops a generation to generation to generation? Yeah, it, it, you know, it still hasn't hit me, you know, that there is uh, uh, such a big fan base for this movie, this series, and this character. It's a very strange thing to be in love with this character, by the way. I, yeah. I worry about some of these fans. <laughs> oh, me too. Me too. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. No, no I, I, it turns out that everyone that... Uh, finds this uh, entertaining is just having a lot of fun with it so yeah. it is great uh, yeah it's, uh, it's it's just very surprising this is so offhanded that I would be known for this or that I actually did it so uh, I don't know what to make of it more than just it's fun it's lucrative you make money uh, and um and it's fun to please the fans. They seem to yeah. get a kick out of it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 My question is, um, how did you feel like stepping back into the role of Michael after almost 40 plus years? You know, like in your, how did you like prepare yourself? Did you have to mentally prepare? Oh, yeah. No. Uh, you know, uh, coming back to the movies that David Gordon Green is directing, the 2018 Halloween, Halloween Kills, Halloween Hands, I'm in little bits and pieces of... Uh, of uh, all three of them. Yeah. So, you know, it's not as if I needed to do any preparation at all. Uh, it really, and again, because you're under a mask, especially for that length of time, oh, yeah. it's not as if you have to kind of, you know, make sure your makeup's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, no, there was no preparation. It just was actually the fun and the honor of, you know, David uh, including me in his, in his uh, trilogy. It felt like it was needed to have you back after 40 plus years. Well, that was fun, and I think that was uh, one of the things that the production wanted to do is tie some of the original uh, yeah. actors and performers and crew and stuff like that to the, the original because they wanted to honor the original and not go away from it, not make it something that it, it's oh, yeah. not. Of course, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Did you, you know, growing up, did you ever imagine yourself being in this television world and just how it developed your your whole life your persona is a part of just who you are now being the uh, Michael Myers character yeah yeah yeah, just, yeah oh well you know no I you know for at least 30 of those years I didn't really have any sense other than I had done this role it had been a big hit but it really is in only in the next last maybe 10 to 15 years that this has had such an impact on the fans you know where they've had these conventions, where I joined in on the conventions, and all the merchandise that comes out of every oh, every, yeah. every year, yeah. something new happens, and of course <laughs> the, the new movies uh, promulgate, you know, yeah. uh, a new series of uh, iconic images, and the fan art is wonderful, and yeah. the pop figures, the, pop figures, figures, yeah. the paintings, the T-shirts. I mean, it has become quite a phenomenon. You know, you no, know, there's no way to prepare for something like that. So, it, but it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, that's that's, amazing. That's that amazing. is amazing. Yeah. Uh, so. um, one more question, actually, for me. Um, how did it feel like working with John Carpenter from back then to now? If you've ever actually seen him from that long ago, do you still work or talk with him at all or anything? Yeah, John and I are still friends. We go out and have a lunch every once in a while. Sometimes when I come back from these conventions, I said, "I just made some money. I owe you another lunch." <laughs> and he takes it. Believe me, he's a cheap ass guy. <laughs> I guess I'll have lunch then one day. <laughs> <laughs> no, John's the best. He, uh, he and I went to film school together, and that's how I got I uh, involved with the uh, project to begin with. Yeah. Later on, he got me on board uh, co-writing with him uh, Escape from New York. Yeah. And that was very instrumental in making my own career as a director and a writer. Awesome. Wow. Yeah. wow. Well, thank you. I like to you know leave every interview with... You know, something uplifting and positive. So if there's anyone yeah. that's out there that's been watching you, following your story, that wants to get into this world, this niche, this element of acting or whatever it may be, if you can give them any words of, you know, encouragement or motivation for them. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a gamble, you know. There's a lot of people trying to get into this line of work. One of the things I always recommend is uh, film school. 
if you're able to get into a film school, you have the money and the you know wherewithal to, to get in there and get. That's how I met John. And sometimes the best thing is the people you meet in terms of getting the next leg up. You have to have some talent, of course, as well. But uh, that's the advice I would give. But wait a minute, I have to ask you guys. I, I hear that you're uh, raising some money here. Oh, yeah. Yes. What are yeah. you doing? Tell me about it. Uh, so we're actually trying to make our own fan film of Halloween, Legend of the Pokemon, actually. And we're actually looking for either funds or anything like that. Anything would help us at all. You can so, You guys listening now? Yeah. This is your chance to be investors in a major <laughs> motion picture. Do it. Do it. This is from The Shape. Hey, that's amazing. Thank you so much for that. Okay. Appreciate it. So Thank long. you. Thank Will you be watching Legend of the Big Man? Thank you. Thank you, guys. Will you be watching it when it comes Oh, out? of course. Yeah, all right. Yeah, you got to invite me to the premiere. <laughs> hey. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. That was an honor. Well, uh, today has been... <laughs> Interesting to say the least. Fun, actually, I love it, man. I don't know about you, but I'm loving it, bro. Like this is my environment right here. How about you, man? My environment, bro. I'm at a big building, <laughs> surrounded by everything I'm scared of. How do you think I feel, bro? You feel amazing, bro. I mean, I feel amazing. You feel like a baby, though, right? <laughs> I do. I got circled. I got trapped. Got, I got. He got hugged. I got hugged. <laughs> I got. <laughs> I don't know what you would call that. I got yanked up, bro. Like, hey, I got punched, bro. It was you did, you got punched. It was yeah. an honor, though. It was an honor. I mean, yeah. punched by Michael. That's always an honor. And Jason, so. And we also, you know, got some stuff. Yeah, got some we got some signatures. autographs. Yeah, we got some good things, you know. Got so. some free shirts. Yeah, we got some free shirts, too. Uh, big shout out to them, actually. Right here. Ride in peace, y'all. Cool. Ride in peace. Nice, nice, nice. Kick push, baby. <laughs> <laughs> we got some dope interviews, too, man. Like, Today, if I remove all the fear in my mind, today was a good day. I mean, the fear in my mind is great, so this is still great for me, honestly. If there was more fear, I would have loved it a little bit more. If it was more, he wanted this to be a poor walking theme park convention. It already is. It's Too much. Just, we just need more people. I mean, Monster Blues is coming up. You're going to that one too. Nope, I'm leaving now. Stay tuned. It could happen. It could happen, guys. Hey, thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of Take One with Josh Wade. If you like what you saw, please subscribe, smash the like button, comment down below what you guys want to see on upcoming episodes, and follow us on all of our social media platforms. Don't miss out, and stay tuned for what's coming next. Hey.